we went to the most amazing farm ever. We did. And this farm is in Missouri, and they're growing bananas in Missouri. Also, they have a lot of neat greenhouses. They have rare chickens, and they have rare plants. But we cover a lot of that in our first video of this two-part video series about the amazing farm at Bakersville. And in this video, we're going to share with you how they are able to produce 8 million packets of seeds each year. Our family sold almost everything, including our house in the city, to start a farm in the country. Join us as we share with you our adventures while we discuss farming, fitness, and everything in between. And don't forget, we live in a year too. We are Farm Fit. We saw a donkey, and Mommy loves donkeys. Come on, say good morning to us. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, come on, come on. Say bye. Hey. Can I for you? Uh -huh. come I on. I can say hello, donkey. Hello. Hello. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> it was also really neat to see the two restored covered wagons that they had from the pioneer days. And as our tour with Kathy continued, she shared with us how Baker Creek is able to get all of their seeds. Because I'm sure most people are asking. One of the, the questions that I get most often is, do we produce all of our seeds here? The answer to that, of course, is no, we do not. Most of our gardens, we do produce and harvest some of our seeds here. <clears throat> But uh, most of our seeds, uh, come, we have about 250 uh, contracted growers. These are usually uh, uh, backyard gardeners, small farmers, etc., uh, scattered across the United States. I've been a contracted grower for Baker Creek by default, uh, simply in that uh, it was maybe six or seven years ago, something like that. Um, Jer had acquired 25 lemon drop hot pepper seeds. And all the gray growers, Simon's Rodney, asked me because he knows I live on a farm and have space. The problem with peppers is that they need 500 feet of isolation from other peppers to not. So all of our grow outs were assigned, and, and he said, Can you grow these at your farm? And I said, Sure. So I took those 25 seeds, 23 of them germinated, and uh, I grew them throughout the season and harvested seeds. That was the first year that we could offer um, lemon drop hot pepper in our catalog. It was also the year that I told Derek Gettle, I will never ever grow hot peppers for you again. <laughs> but growing them was fun. The harvesting of the seeds, I shed more tears, went through how many oh. boxes of tissues. And, um, that sounds so, lovely. But, but that, that's how our things are grown. And it is not unusual for him to get 25 seeds. People will bring in something and say, would you like to have these? And so that's where a lot of our varieties uh, come from. Um, but we do purchase some of our seeds from larger seed houses, but we're very picky about who we purchase from. None of them are Monsanto owned, Semini owned, etc. cetera. Uh, they have to have taken the safe seed pledge, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's where our seeds come from. When we pack 8 million packs of seeds a year, it isn't possible to grow that many seeds here on the farm. So let's go down and have a look at the warehouse. Wow, 8 million seeds? That sure is a lot of seeds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And next, we traveled down to the warehouse where they actually pack the seeds. So when I started working here, all of our seeds were hand packed right here in this room. This entire room was filled with tables and people sitting here, just like Dustin, who is filling up our hands. You see that he's using a rather large scoop here. Um, if you kind of come around, on the other side, you can see what we used to use. I mean, depending on, you know, a little scoop this tiny for little tiny seeds, or, you know, something this size, or the big half cup scoop, which is, I think is what uh, Justin is using. But this room was filled with people because we literally packed every package of seeds by hand. Yeah. Wow. 
so we fast forward, and now we've got our first seed packing machine. Uh, maybe five or six years ago, something like that. But you can see, um, when we had to, you can see a seed packet here, and now that this entire machine that only does it pack the seeds, um, but it prints a barcode, it prints all of the information. Back when we used to pack seeds by hand, as Justin said, now we actually just did a label, printed a label on the computer, and so we had to stick a label on each one as well. Um, so I believe Davey can pack 10,000 packs a day in, um, in an, an eight-hour shift. We sometimes run this two shifts a day during our busy season. Um, and then last year, we actually acquired, or this year, this year or last year, we acquired a second seed packing machine. So when things get really busy and hectic, we can actually use two machines. You see that Justin's hand packing, we still do hand pack a few of our seeds for a couple of reasons. If it's something that we need just a few packs, we don't bother with the seed packing machine because every time we use it, it has to be air blown out, all cleaned, etc. cetera. Or uh, if it's a, the really big seeds, you saw what he was packing there, um, that's another reason. So, but all the seeds, all of the business for Baker Creek is done right here at this headquarters. Uh, people are aware that we have um, the Seed Bank in Petaluma, California, and we have Comstock Ferry in Connecticut. Those are retail only. Um, all of the actual business is done right here. Uh, all the seeds are, are ordered and shipped from here. They're packed from here. So this is where everything's sent on this little bitty property outside five miles from this little bitty town of Mansfield, Missouri, which is less than a thousand people and it's only claim to fame as the fact that Loring was wild and lived here which wrote the little house books but otherwise we're out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and it's amazing to think that at our May spring planting festival we will have 10,000 people wow we we actually did more than that this year uh, so for the last three years consecutively we've had more than 10,000 people come to our spring planting festival so if you can imagine that you've seen the farm yeah. sit on the hillside it's cars and people everywhere that is fantastic this is amazing because this is where we store all of our seeds. And our seeds come to us um, from our growers in various varieties. For example, you see big bags down here. They can come to us in shoe boxes, coffee cans, whatever. Once we get them and inventory them and everything is good to go, we store them in buckets with, with tight fitting lids. It can be a little bucket like this, if it's something that we don't need a lot of the seeds or they're small seeds, or we can store them in five gallon buckets like this. But, Selah, have you ever seen your birth certificate? Do you know what your birth certificate is? I don't think I've shown it to you before. Every, everybody <laughs> has a birth certificate, and that birth certificate has very valuable information. It tells who your parents are, where you were born, when you were born, how much you weighed, I think. Anyway, it has lots of valuable information. Every one of these buckets you see has a birth certificate in it. And this birth certificate gives us very valuable information. It tells us the name of the variety, what type it is, the catalog number, uh, how much of the seed we have, when it was last germination tested, and what that germination test was. So every one of these closed containers will have one of these birth certificates because it contains very valuable information for us. Just like your birth certificate at home, you'll have to ask dad to see it when you get home. <laughs> So, <clears throat> but people come into the warehouse when I get tricked and they say, oh my, Yes. Well, it just gets better. Wow. Okay. This is a lot of seeds, isn't it, Sailor? Yeah. We're right now in the process <clears throat> of shipping out our garlic. So you'll see boxes of garlic uh, sitting around, different varieties of, of garlic. But I want you to also look at the garlic hanging up there. Um, a lot of our, our guys, a few years ago, there was a grower in New Mexico who was growing garlic and he was no longer going to be able to take care of it. And so he, he just gave us 200 varieties of garlic to keep the varieties going. He just didn't want to, to see them leave. And so that's where we get a lot of our seeds. Um, a lot of people will come in with seeds and they say, uh, my grandpa died and we found these in his dresser drawer. Would you like to have them? We don't know what they are. Jared never says no. You know, we always accept seeds that, uh, and you know, people say, 
I don't know if they'll even grow. You know, how long can you keep the seeds? Well, it depends on how they've been stored, etc. But uh, we always, you know, take any heirloom seeds that we love it when somebody knows something about them. We, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that people ask me, I just gave a presentation on Sunday uh, to the uh, Missouri Master Gardener State Convention. And uh, the, most, the question I get most often is, what is an heirloom seed? And that's actually controversial. Some people say that an heirloom seed has to be at least 50 years old for it to be an heirloom. What we say here at Baker Creek is that heirloom seeds are, they have a history. They've been passed down through the generations and they have a history. Um, they of course have to be open pollinated. They can't require, you know, intervention. They have to be open pollinated in nature, et cetera. Uh, and grow true to the parent plant unless you cross them in your own garden. But anyway, so this is, uh, you see the herbs hanging there and we'll just go up the ramp here. All right, so Miss Kathy talked about your birth certificate. Since those seeds have birth certificates, <laughs> so do you. And here it is, Sailor's birth certificate. It's got your name on it, <laughs> when you were born, and who your parents are. Officially, you've seen it now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And we thought there was a lot of seeds in the first warehouse, but there's even more in the second. There sure is. So the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company started out as a mail order seed business. And that is still what it is today. And so we're now in the final the final building here, so you'll see where the seeds are actually shipped out uh, to the customers. So if you want to come down here. When I started working here, we had a sheet of paper to fill our orders. We'd have a sheet of paper. We'd literally walk down um, the, the shelves of the seed store, pull those, and then when we shipped them, every single one we had to type in i worked in the shipping office for two years we'd have to type in the name and address on every single one it's so much uh more automated now actually this sophisticated system that he's going to explain to you the neat thing about it is that it was developed by our own people that is david and jason yep. uh that's here so i'm gonna let him uh explain how this works for you yeah so I can go ahead and kick on the system here if you guys want to see the holographic work that I've done. Oh yeah, that'd be fantastic. That's, that's, and then copyright that's, that's, on that. And then, that's impressive. Uh, I wrote the software up on this. And Jason did the background for the database and uh, he did the PLC cabinet and motion control. And between the two of us and one other gentleman, we turned all the wrenches to go ahead and actually physically construct all this. So, wow. <clears throat> yeah, it's all built in house uh, for sure. Uh, so let me go ahead and kick on the... Uh, and this is impressive because when, when we picked seeds in a seed store, you know, we'd have this piece of paper and we'd have the, you know, one of these, two of these, whatever. And he's going to show you our laser light system and how it works so that um, you don't, we don't have to do that now. What do you think about this, you say? It's actually just a standard projector. It's, it's not a laser light. I am wrong. Oh. We, we I've never been wrong before, but this time. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> so they're tiny projectors, each of them. Yeah, these are all uh, 1080p projectors. Okay. So we got 20 of them, or 19 of them in here. And we have two supercomputers running the software that I engineered. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on with this. We call it Ludicrous Speed. The last system that I that I made for us is called Light Speed. Okay. Um, because it just sped us up. So what's faster than light speed? It's ludicrous. There speed. you go. <laughs> Mel Brooks like defined that. that within his uh, movie Spaceballs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the good guys are getting away at the That's... speed of light. The bad guys are trying to catch them and they overshoot them. They go faster than the speed of light and they go straight to plaid. So we there we go. <laughs> so it, just, it really worked. It really worked. I like that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and kick on our system here. Um, this will be about 110 seconds uh, for it to totally come up. Um, but while we're waiting for that, I can show you uh, a little bit about how the logic of this whole thing works. So we have a conveyor belt down here, and I'll go ahead and kick that on. So here's our conveyor belt. We have a new cylinder in the system too. It goes quite a bit faster than our, um, our old cylinders. These are old cylinders. These are our brand new cylinders. This is engineered from a company called uh, PhD. Okay. And uh, PhD went ahead and did us a favor and custom engineered this cylinder for us. Okay. And uh, I'll kind of show you it just 
how fast this bad boy goes. Okay, so this, this is kind of neat. It tells us what size of an envelope to grab before our first packet comes towards us. Okay. okay? So I'm going to grab a size three. Let's go. Grab a size three. We've developed the system to run for 15,000 orders a day. Wow. This is 15,000 envelopes. Wow. Kind of a visual representation of that. Now, we've never hit that. Okay. The we ever hit is maybe five, 6,000, somewhere in there. That's still a lot. Yeah, quite a bit per day. Uh, and notice so, he said orders, not packets. An yeah. order can be one packet of seeds or it can be uh, 500 packets well. of seeds. Right, exactly. It varies all over the place. And in this instance, it's 18 packets of seeds. And based on the last 100 orders, it should take me six minutes and 10 seconds to go ahead and produce it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, so, what we'll do is I'm going to run it through our fast cylinder here and you guys can see just what I'm talking about. It is a okay. little This one says for me to pick one. Okay. And it's telling me that it's BR-104 and that's what this is. It's BR-104, broccoli-104. This is broccoli-104. So I know that it's all the right stuff if I ever want to check. All I have to do is just drop it in here and it will go ahead and scan it. And as it scans it, it will go ahead and reduce it from the wall. Okay, and wow. That's how we actually pick. That is fantastic. And, that is uh, efficient. Right, so uh, <laughs> it boosts your efficiency, just this system, from like 600 packets or 600 orders a day. Wow. From, from running without the holographic system, we were able to do 600 to 1,000 orders a day. Now with the holographic system, we're, you know, like I was saying, 6,000 <laughs> a day. So it's a little bit quicker. It's an international one. So this one is going to New Fork, Australia. And because it's an Australia one, we have to include FIDO certificates. So I threw up a different condition up here. I uh, could go ahead and show you guys a different order where we utilize the top conveyor belt. Okay. But I'm just gonna leave this one here. So I'll go ahead and download a new order. And if we actually download two orders at the same time, it takes the sum of all of these, including all the other ones that would be active. It eliminates the hollow with that. Like I was saying about the colorization, since it's just me, I'm gonna go ahead and run with all purple and green. There we go. Or if I'm not comfy with that, I wanna do, I don't know, white and black. There's all. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So I could go ahead and colorize like this one to be purple. There we go. And now you guys can pick the purple ones if you want, place it on there. It needs to go sideways on the belt. So. You like the purple belt. Do <laughs> do can you reach the purple one? You want to try? Watch mama, she's doing it. She's getting the purple one. Can I get a purple one? Here, we'll come and get this one. Here. Okay, here. That first cylinder, it takes us from having to have everything a foot and a half apart to having to do is we grab, we grab the seeds, we pop them in here gently. We grab a thank you, hand signed by our employees, of course. Fantastic. Personal touch. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's the order receipt. Receipt goes in there. We take the trash off. We pop this like this. And we follow the instructions and it says, put it in the blue tote below, press the blue button above, get a shipping label, ball up your trash, throw it up here. Then we put our shipping label on the envelope and put the envelope up here. And we put the trash up here. So Newton's first law comes into motion at this point. Uh, when we download a new order, it will go ahead and automatically start this conveyor belt. Okay. And we'll take it down to the end. If we follow that and beat it so that we can watch this, it's kind of interesting watching a little physics in action. <laughs> but it's pretty neat to see how they're able to do it. Also, as the conveyor belt was taking the seeds and then taking them to the package area once they were packaged, and it was neat how they just set up the system where the conveyor belt just dropped the garbage into the garbage can, but the package just kept going, ready to be shipped away. <laughs> Remember that part? Yep. So there you have it. That is a little insight on how Baker Creek is able to package 8 million packets of seed each year and this farm is just totally amazing and, and i cannot keep saying it enough how amazing they are <laughs> and we've done we've created a playlist with all the videos that we've done while we're at baker creek so make sure you check them out if you haven't seen them already also while we were there one of the staff members christina took some family photos of us which is really cool 
and they also have a neat germination room kind of like our grow room where they germinate seeds and they also incubate eggs for chicks ducklings stuff like that <laughs> On the other side, they do the eggs. Okay. okay. And here we have the incubators for the seeds to warm them up so that, you know, for the germination tests. Sayla, can you think of anything else? No, but it was really sad when we went to leave. It was really sad when we had to leave. But we look forward to going again. And if you, in case you miss it, we've provided a number of videos from our time at Bakersville. And make sure you check them out. We've created a playlist with a number of those videos in the first part of our tour at Bakersville. Also, we're providing for our Patreon members, we're providing an extended video tour of Bakersville. We're also providing a number of videos from the different conferences that we've been at, such as the National Heirloom Expo and the Homesteaders of America, as well as the Homesteading Life Conference to our Patreon members. Yes, we're, we're not going to upload these directly to YouTube because people have to pay to attend these events and we don't want to devalue these events. So if you want to see these videos and these exclusive material and more, feel free to check out our Patreon page. Information is in the show notes below. That's it for now. We'll see you next, next time. time. Grow, Grow on. on. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below, even if it's just to say, hey. Also, make sure you don't miss any of our new videos. So subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video. Also, you may want to check out these videos right here. And also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.